Thanks, Alan. Okay, um, thanks very much for uh, coming to this uh, online seminar uh, in this uh, particular uh, different period of uh, time uh, when we cannot actually have the face-to-face uh, -face seminar. Um, today, we are very happy to have uh, Dr. Xiao Qingming uh, from the HKUST. Um, Dr. Uh, Xiao has uh, received his uh, bachelor degree uh, from the Tsinghua University and his uh, PhD from UCLA. And he has a very impressive uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, so I just uh, highlight some of the uh, important things. Um, currently, uh, Dr. Xiao is um, focusing on the research on the novel electronic and spintronic materials uh, in the application of memories um, and quantum computing applications. His research works has been published in many of the uh, high profile journals such as Science, Nature Nanotechnology, Nature Electronics, Nature Communications, etc. Actually, there are quite a lot uh, going on, so I just give out the most important ones. And he has been the recipient of uh, various um, uh, fellowships and uh, awards. Currently, Dr. Xiao is also the chair of the IEEE Hong Kong John Chapter of EDSSC. So, you know, we are very glad to have uh, Dr. Xiao to uh, be presenting for the Magnetic Society because his work is actually highly related to the um, spin orbit talk, a very hot topic in the Magnetic Society. So uh, he will be combining two hot topics, I, was, I should say, 2D materials and spin orbit talk devices. So uh, Dr. Xiao, your turn. Okay, thank you, uh, Dennis, for the nice introduction. And uh, thank IEEE. Hong Kong uh, Magnetic Society for the invitation. So today my topic is about uh, two-dimensional materials for energy efficient spin orbital torque devices. So before I uh, uh, get into the detail of my talk, I want to first advertise for my like uh, online seminar series. So I'm currently the chair of the Hong Kong joint chapter of this uh, electron device and the solid state circuit. And we also have this kind of online seminar series. And uh, some of the, our seminars uh, will be uploaded to the YouTube and the Bilibili platform. So if you miss the deadline, uh, like miss the meeting, you can actually uh, attend, uh, watch the videos. We recently have two seminars uh, and are uh, highly related to the Spintronics community, such as this uh, uh, device design and this uh, Megalon transmission in this uh, antiferromagnetic insulators. So if you are interested, you are uh, welcome to go online and check out this uh, uh, seminars. So let's let's talk about let's let's start my presentation. So today we are in the big data era. So in like uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, we actually are heavily rely on this uh, hard disk drive, and uh, and we know that the data capacity has been increasing almost exponentially in the past. Uh, 10 years thanks to the data center and uh, significant amount of the intelligent devices and uh, artificial intelligence algorithms. And this kind of uh, smart devices and artificial intelligence algorithms allow us to have the huge like improvement in our daily life. It can help perform a lot of cognitive tasks. In the future, so for example, we have the autonomous vehicles. An important thing we need to take notice is that a significant amount of data needed to be processed at these edge devices so that we do not need to put our data back to the data center and the process in the data center. So this kind of transfer will give you a lot of delay. This will not be allowed in this kind of time demanding devices such as autonomous vehicles. So the safety is the first priority. You have to make the decision very fast. However, the traditional hard disk drive is not up to task because they require the mechanical motion to do the reading and the writing, and they are very slow, such as a uh, uh, minimum second uh, speed. So there is a quest for fast, energy efficient, and scalable memory. In addition, if it can be long volatile, that would be the best because it can store the information without any standby power. So people have investigated the uh, resistive random asset memory, conducting bridge random asset memory, Best changing memory and uh, spin transfer talk magneto resistive random access memory. You can see here the MRM, this 
in the preferred column, it has a very low energy consumption and it has a fairly small uh, unit cell size. In addition, the advantages of the MRAM are twofold. You have very fast dynamics of this MRAM devices. The speed can be as fast as like a level second. In addition, they do not rely on any ionic motion or phase transition so that they have unlimited endurance. So they are very like uh, good for the embedded applications. So for the purpose of the introduction, I want to introduce the key parameters of this MRAM. So the key component of this MRAM is this magnetic tunnel junction. This magnetic tunnel junction consists of three layers. On the top, you have the magnetic fixed layer, you have the tunnel dielectric layer, you have the magnetic free layer. This magnetic fixed layer has the fixed magnetization, which cannot be easily changed. For the magnetic free layer, you have the magnetization that can be changed to uh, change the information you store in the unit cell. And uh, we concern about the four pre -pre properties. The first one is the reading. So we know that if this magnetization of the fixed layer and the free layer are parallel, you will have the low resistance. If they are anti-parallel, you will have a high resistance and the difference determines the ratio and it determines the reading efficiency. We want to make them as high as possible. The second important thing I will focus on in this talk is the writing energy. We want to have the writing energy as low as possible. The third thing is about the speed. Previously, we mentioned that this kind of uh, magnetic material or magnetic tunnel junction can work at a level second speed because the intrinsic ferromagnetic resonance is working at the gigahertz. If we can actually use any ferromagnet to replace the ferromagnet, we can achieve like a terahertz speed. That's like a one whole topic people are intensively pursuing. The last thing is about the scalability or the thermal stability. These MRAM devices are used to store the information. So the key is to make sure that you can keep the information. So you have to have a sufficient energy barrier to avoid the, uh, the information loss. We have the thermal excitation at room temperature. So we want to make sure that our energy barrier is much higher than the thermal fluctuation energy. This MTGs could have more applications beyond MRAM. Here we list some examples. For example, you can use it for like microwave applications. You have shown that you can use um, this magnetic tunnel junctions to do microwave detection, microwave generation, or even microwave amplification. If you embed this kind of uh, MTGS into like a CMOS technology, you can do some logic in memory applications. People are also investigating this kind of MTGS for neuromorphic application because they are reminiscent of the uh, oscillators. And this kind of oscillators allows you to build an oscillator network to mimic the brain network. People have already used it to demonstrate the voice recognition and the pattern recognition. So in this presentation, I will focus on the uh, writing of these MRM devices, how to minimize the energy cost of this writing. So we want to use the electrical method to control the magnetic moment. And the first electrical method is the spin transfer torque. This kind of a spin transfer torque, MRAM, has already been demonstrated by major companies such as TSMC, Intel, and Samsung. They already have the embedded STT MRAM with like a 22 nanometer CMOS technology. Here we try to introduce the fundamental principle. Initially, we have this kind of trilayer, right? So we apply current through this kind of uh, bilayer. We can actually transfer the uh, uh, spin angular momentum from the one layer to another layer. And this kind of transfer is called the spin transfer torque. So for example, if, if initially we have this kind of any parallel uh, configuration, we have high resonance. We apply electron current so from the fixed layer to free layer. And uh, you can see that the transmitted spin current carries the opposite spin with respect to the free layer, so it can flip the magnetization. The detailed uh, spin transfer talk are written like this. 
So you can treat it as the M cross the effect field. And then this damping like effect field is uh, depending on the M cross sigma. M is the magnetization, sigma is the induced uh, spin current polarization. This spin polarization is from the fixed layer, all the free layer. So it is collinear with the magnetization. The free, uh, the field light effect field is uh, directly proportional to the sigma. So it is um, a lot of dependent on the magnetization. So we can have uh, like an uh, animation to illustrate the physics. So initially, okay, there, it is the anti pair layer. So we apply a spin unpolarized current through this magnetic tunnel junction. Initially, it's a spin unpolarized. The spin polarization are randomly distributed. After you pass through it through the fixed layer, it will get spin polarized. All the spin angular momentum will be obtained from the fixed layer. And this spin angular momentum will be transferred to the free layer and achieve the magnetization reversal. On reversing, okay, if we want to switch from the low resonance state to high resonance state, we need to apply the current in the opposite direction. So we actually here utilize the reflected spin current. So the reflected spin current carries a spin position that is opposite to the uh, free layer magnetization. So it can allow the uh, switching. We notice three important challenges for this STT MRAM. Firstly, you can see that the switching is not symmetrical. So for the uh, uh, switching from a high resonance state to low resonance state, you are utilizing the transmitted spin current. For the switching from the low resonance state to high resonance state, you are utilizing the reflected spin current. So they are not the same. So you will have the asymmetrical spin switching current. So this makes circuit design challenging. The second thing is about the high current induced dielectric breakdown. So the tunnel oxide, such as MGO, is a one nanometer thick. So if you directly apply current through this one nanometer thick oxide, it can eventually cause the breakdown of this tunnel oxide. Certainly, it's about uh, so the thing is about the uh, incubation time, okay? So this is a uh, uh, very subtle, okay? So you can see here, so the damping like torque is uh, proportional to M cross M cross sigma. So this sigma is proportional to M, right? So no matter it is a collinear, uh, it's a parallel, anti-parallel, initially it's zero. So you don't have the spin transfer torque. So for this kind of STD switching, you are relying on the like uh, the thermal excitation. So the thermal excitation needs to tilt the magnetization of the free layer a little bit so that you generate the spin transfer torque. And this kind of spin transfer torque will uh, complete the switching. So this thermal excitation time is like uh, called the incubation time. So the switching time is actually kind of limited by this incubation time. So recently, okay, People propose that you can use the spin current from a long magnetic material, such as platinum, tungsten, and tantalum. Okay, this kind of long magnetic material have a strong spin hole effect or rush bar effect. This kind of effect allow you to generate a transverse spin current by applying the longitudinal charge current. The relation between the spin current, charge current, and the spin current polarization direction is given by this formula, okay? They are mutually orthogonal. And the strength of this uh, SOT will be quantified by this uh, uh, spin hole angle. So here, I would like to argue that this spin hole angle should be like a, a more, should be like a more properly attributed to a spin hole tangent. This is like the uh, ratio of the spin current to the charge current. If the spin hole angle is small, like less than 0.3, so these two are almost the same, okay? This is like uh, almost the same. However, when the spin hole angle is large, like uh, for example, in the extreme case, like a 90 degree. So tangent 90 degree give you infinity. So the spin hole tangent can be very, very large. So here is the animation of the SOT induced switching. So we apply current in this kind of long magnetic layer, okay? This long magnetic layer is beneath this uh, free layer. So we apply current through this uh, heavy metal layer. 
and you have initially spin and polarized current. Due to this spin hole effect, you generate the spin polarized current along the z direction. And the z direction carry this spin polarization. And this spin polarization will flip the magnetization. If you want to switch it back, you just apply along the current along the opposite direction, and uh, you achieve the switching in the opposite direction. So we can see that the switching mechanism is exactly the same. Okay, the switch current is symmetrical. Secondly, you don't need to apply current through this tunneling oxide. So there's no breakdown issue. So lastly, okay, regarding the incubation time, okay, so for this case, you still have the incubation time problem because they are collinear. However, if the spin position has like a long collinear component, for example, implant component, you will not have this incubation time problem. We will talk about it a little more in the following slides. Okay, so we have now discussed the SOT switching. So we have in explicit, in, uh, implicitly said that we want to use the perpendicular magnetic surgery. So why perpendicular magnetic surgery? So everything is related to the energy efficiency, okay? So for the thin films, okay, because of the demagnetization energy, you usually will have this kind of in-plane anisotropy. So the magnetization tends to stay in the plane, okay? And the anisotropy is defined by the ratio, okay, the aspect ratio. So you need to make the uh, uh, MTGA uh, elliptical shape, okay? And this aspect ratio defines anisotropy. The more elliptical the MTGA is, the larger the anisotropy is. So however, for if you can achieve the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy, you don't need to have this kind of uh, uh, elliptical shape, okay? So it's better for the scanning. More importantly, if you look at the switching current, okay, for the in-plane MDJ, you need to overcome additional demagnetization energy. For the perpendicular magnet case, you don't need to overcome this demagnetization energy. And the result, this perpendicular magnet allows you to have lower switching current. So this is a preferred for the MRM devices. So we have already tried to uh, minimize the current by using appropriate anisotropy. So we still have, like, so, so far we have talked about the state of art, okay? So we still have two important challenges, okay? So first is still the SOT efficiency, and then eventually the uh, energy efficiency. For typical MTG switching, you need to consume one picojoule. However, for CMOS transistor, to turn it on and off, we only consume about like one femtone joule, okay, per switch. So if we embed a lot of MTGs into the CMOS chip, we will generate a lot of heat, which will make the scanning even worse, right? So CMOS is already very hot. If we have more MTGs, it will become hotter and hotter. That's the problem. So we look at these fundamental equations to look for solution. So these are the fundamental equations for STD and SOT. So if we look at STT, okay, so we have this E is the electron charge, alpha is the damping, K is the Boltzmann constant, T is the temperature, delta is the thermal steady factor. So the thermal steady factor is almost a constant for like uh, keeping inflation for 10 years. H bar is the Planck constant, P is the spin position ratio, okay. So for the STT case, the spin angular momentum is transferred from the magnetic material, right? So it is uh, fundamentally limited by the spin polarization ratio at the Fermi level of the magnetic material. So it cannot be larger than one, okay? So the maximum value is one. For SOT case, all the parameters are same, except this uh, C, okay? This uh, C DL is actually the SOT efficiency. There's no fundamental limit, okay? We can potentially make it very large. And in this talk, we will propose to use one material, okay, one 2D material to achieve very large SOT efficiency. Okay, this is a question. So the second question is about the direction of the SOT. So in the previous picture, right, so we apply a current, okay, this is electron current, we have the initially unspin polarized current, and then we generate the spin current, and then we spin current like carries this kind of spin polarization, right? It can cause the spin flip. 
and uh, the swing current is given by this equation. However, in the reality, we can have this kind of configuration. The swing position could be in plane. It could be the pointing towards us or pointing into the paper. Okay. So if we look carefully at the spin hole picture, okay, the spin hole picture, if we apply current along this direction, you have the spin current along the z direction, the spin position should be in plane. So it should be in plane. In this case, okay, in this case, it is very different, okay. So you will have a different, uh, you can still achieve the magnetic switching. However, the switching current is different. In this formula, you don't have the alpha. Since the alpha is a small value, like 0 0.01 to 0 0.5, you can see that for this kind of switching with only in plane position, you could have a potentially much higher current. Okay, this is from theory. Okay, in a reality, the switching current is not that large. Okay, but in principle, if we can have the spin position collinear with the magnetization, we can reduce it down to the level of the alpha. Okay, that would be the idea. So here is the overview. So we will talk about the two important uh, categories of uh, 2D materials. In the, for the first one, we will talk about the topological insulators. So topological insulators are uh, topological materials, and they have intrinsic spin moment locking from their topological surface state. And then we will see that it can allow us to generate a joint SOT. So we try to use the analogy to find the extreme case of the SOT. We know that, right? For the Hall effect, you apply a longitudinal current. In the presence of the Hall uh, external field along the z direction, you will have the transverse charge current. And this uh, is defined by the Hall angle, OK? If we have the quantum Hall effect, all the electrons inside the material will form the orbital motion. It will not contribute to a current. All the current will flow on the edge, OK? So basically, there's no longitudinal current. All the current goes transversely. So the spin hole, so the whole angle is 90 degrees, and the whole tangent is like infinity. We try to utilize a similar idea, okay? We, we, we try to use this kind of idea to, uh, to see if we can push the SOT to the extremely large case. We apply longitudinal current. In the presence of the intrinsic spin coupling, you can generate a transverse spin current. So that so there is the spin hole angle, right? Typically for metal like a palladium tungsten and uh, tantalum is small, like 0.3 or less than 0.3. However, for a dream case, we have quantum spin hole effect. For the quantum spin hole effect, all the spin current goes transverse. In that sense, okay, the spin hole angle is 90 degrees and the uh, spin tangent is infinity. So potentially the SOT efficiency can be infinity. So this is the picture for the 2D topological insulator. So the spin current only flows on the edge. So we try to utilize a 3D topological insulator because we want to use the surface states. So this bismuth steroid, bismuth steroid, and animal steroid, they are 2D materials, and they are topological materials. In the real space, you will have this kind of uh, uh, structure. So the spin direction is locked to the momentum direction. Okay, so if you have the uh, current flow along this direction, you will have the spin fixed along one direction. If you change the current direction to the opposite direction, the spin direction will also be changed to the opposite direction. So this is called the spin momentum locking. In 2014, so my previous group at the UCLA have demonstrated the joint SOT at the cryogenic temperature. So they have observed that the SOT efficiency can be as large as 100, okay, or even larger than 100. So this is like a two orders of magnitude improvement compared with the heavy metal, which is usually 0.3 or less than 0.3. So we further demonstrated that this kind of uh, SOT is from the uh, topological surface state. So we control the topological surface state carry density by using the gate voltage. So we can see that the uh, effective SOT field is correlated with the carrier density of the surface state. And we believe that it is a direct electron mediated SOT. Almost at the same time, 
Professor Daniel Roth's group at Conlea also demonstrated a giant spin orbital torque from this topological material at room temperature. Okay, they observed the SOT efficiency larger than one, which is also like one order of magnitude larger than the heavy metal case. So later, people have observed this kind of large SOT routinely in these topological insulators uh, using various methods, such as uh, spin torque, ferromagnetic resonance, loop shift methods, and sick harmonic hall method. And people discovered that this kind of insulating topological material has a much larger SOT efficiency than the metallic one, because this kind of insulating topological materials have a more surface state contribution. So this is consistent with our expectation of surface state dominated SOT generation. However, to achieve the real SOT MRAM based on topological insulators, we have two challenges. First, if you look at the table, you will see that even at the room temperature, you will have a large discrepancy in different reports. So what is the problem? So is it the material variation? So different groups grow different materials, or is it the material, uh, the measurement difference that caused the difference? Secondly, it is very difficult to integrate the perpendicular magnets with the topological insulators because there is no interface of perpendicular magnetic surgery at the TI-FM interface. So we try to address these two issues and make the TI-based SOT MRM practical. So we propose to use a modibulum to, prom to, to achieve this perpendicular magnetic surgery at the room temperature. So why do we choose this modibulum? So we have three advantages. First, this modibulum promotes PMA at room temperature. Okay, so this molybdenum copper boron MG heater structure has PMA. Also, it has a very high, it also has a very uh, high thermal stability, so it will allow the MRM structure sustain the back end of line process, such as a 400 Celsius degree. Certainly, this MO, this molybdenum is a regularly uh, uh, weak, has relatively weak uh, spin of the coupling so that this uh, spin of the torque, okay, the spin current can transfer from this uh, topological insulator layer to this cobalt ion boron layer, this ferromagnetic layer. So we demonstrated this uh, uh, room temperature anisotropy, uh, perpendicular anisotropy in this TI molybdenum cobalt boron trilayer by tuning the molybdenum of uh, uh, cobalt boron segment. After that, we try to quantify the SOT efficiency using the second harmonic Hall effect. So we apply the AC current through this Hall bar structure and we detect the second harmonic Hall voltage. So the principle is illustrated here. So we apply current along the TI layer and we generate the spin position at the interface. And this spin position will interact with the magnetic moment and generate two kinds of the SOT effect field. And this damping like a field will be M cross sigma, okay? So in the sigma is the in plane along the X direction, right? So M cross sigma will give you out plane damping like a field. The field, if ever field, is just uh, proportional to the uh, sigma. So it's an in plane. So this uh, out plane damping like a field will kill the magnetization out plane. So this will modulate this alarm hole resistance and the implant field will modulate the plant hole resistance. And eventually we can fit the result by using this, this uh, uh, equation. We need to be cautious since this, there is the thermal electrical contribution. We need to carefully exclude this contribution by doing field dependence. A second method we try to explore is this uh, differential Mach effect. Here, we detect this modulated magnetic orbital curl rotation. So this is kind of a magnetic orbital curl rotation is directly proportional to the Z component of the magnetization. And the result is like this. So there's no thermal electric artifact. So we have tried to use these two methods to do the SOT efficiency quantification. We obtained a very consistent uh, first harmonic uh, results and the second harmonic results. 
So this uh, gives us a confidence that we can determine SOT efficiency very accurately. So here is the table of uh, SOT efficiency at room temperature from different materials. For this work, you can see that the obtained SOT efficiency is much higher than this in heavy metals. And this suggests that the, SO, uh, the TI SOT efficiency is really large and they can uh, potentially provide the advantage in terms of energy efficiency. With this joint SOT, we demonstrated uh, the SOT switch and the critical current density in the TI is as low as three times 10 to the six, uh, 10 to the line ampere per meter square. So we need to use an external field to assist the switching. As we will discuss later, the SOT itself will not allow the determinative switching if we only have the in-plane spin position. We also observe this kind of interesting memoristic-like behavior. So you can see that we have achieved different magnetic state, and different resistance state. So this can be potentially used for neuromorphic applications. So our results have shown that we can actually determine the SOT efficiency using two independent methods. And this uh, uh, determination is very accurate. We obtained a very high SOT efficiency. As this efficiency is at the record uh, efficiency at that time. More importantly, we have developed a highly efficient room temperature PMA, thermally stable, and industry compatible material stack. So I believe that in the future, our materials can be directly utilized in the uh, CMOS technology in the back end of process. There are relative progress in this field. So we grew our MBE, okay, uh, topology insulators using molecular beam epitaxy. And uh, it is not that industry compatible, especially for the very large films. So people try to use this sputtering to deposit this kind of uh, uh, topological insulator-like material. And they also achieve, achieve the very large SOT efficiency. So this is the direction people are paying attention. So maybe we can achieve this kind of topological insulator-like material and uh, achieve very high uh, energy efficiency. So in addition to this specimen cell line, people are exploring other kind of materials and they can be also very efficient. People have shown that for this specimen antimony alloy, okay, this kind of topological metal or this kind of conductive topological insulators, you can achieve the damping like torque efficiency as large as 50 at the room temperature, okay, which is another one of the material improvement. So this, uh, uh, this shows that this topological insulator can really be the key for the uh, energy efficiency of the SOT memory. I hope that by law, I have convinced you that topological insulators are very good spin source to generate real talks for energy efficient MRM devices. Now let's discuss the transition metal dicalculate TMD for short. They have very diverse properties and they allow the generation of unconventional spin of the talk. So we have mentioned that the outer plane spin position is desired, right? So because this outer plane spin position can potentially give you much lower switching current density, at least from the theoretical point of view, okay? The second point is that without this kind of spin position along the Z direction, you cannot achieve the uh, field-free switching. And we showed before, for topological insulators, if we want to achieve the SOT switching, we have to apply the external field to assist the, the SOT switching. So why? Why does SOT switching require this external magnetic field if we only have the implant spin position? We try to use symmetry to analyze it. For typical, the heavy metal, ferromagnetic metal, MGO trilayer, we have this uh, mirror symmetry with respect to the XZ plane. So we have two major types of the vectors. One is the pseudo vector, one is the special vector. The current vector is the uh, special vector. So with respect to this mirror symmetry, that does not change direction. For the magnetic moment or the magnetic field, it is a pseudo vector. We need to pay attention when we analyze if it uh, changes direction. If the magnetic field is along the y direction, which is perpendicular to the mirror, they will not change direction. We can analyze the 
using this uh, current loop method. So this magnet moment can be treated as uh, this current loop. This current loop will generate this kind of magnet moment. We see that uh, in this mirror, you will have the same direction for the current loop so that you will have the same magnet moment. However, for the magnet moment or the magnet field along the y direction, oh, sorry, along the x direction and the z direction, you will have the flipped uh, uh, direction in the mirror world. So we will see that why this kind of current okay, in this uh, symmetry reserved structure will not generate the outplane effective field. So assume we have the outplane in position or like a magnetic moment induced by the current. So this one will change the direction in the mirror, right? We have the, okay, we have the mirror symmetry. Okay, supposedly we should have the same magnetic moment induced by the current. However, they are opposite. So this says that the magnetic moment or the spin current, the, uh, sorry, the spin position induced by the current has to be zero along the Z direction. Okay, so this is the prohibited. Because you don't have this kind of Z direction magnetic moment, you cannot achieve the deterministic switching. For the aim, okay, you see, it can be along Z direction or minus Z direction. They are both allowed, okay? This symmetry, the mirror symmetry is reserved. These two cases are the same, okay? So you cannot achieve deterministic switching by only applying current. We can break the symmetry by applying the magnetic field. Here we apply the magnetic field along the x direction. Okay, so apply field along x direction. If we take the image, okay, like the mirror image operation, right, the magnetic field will change the direction. So we see that in the mirror world and the real world, they are different. Okay, the symmetry is breaking, is broken. So if you apply current, only one type of the magnetization is allowed. Here in the real world, this current will prefer up magnetization, and in the mirror world, it will prefer down magnetization. However, so in this case, okay, we need to have an external field, right? So this is not really designed for the real application. We don't want to apply the external field, right? We want to achieve the switching all electrically. So uh, in my previous group at UCLA, uh, they have demonstrated that you can use this kind of wedge structure to intentionally break the structure symmetry. So you can see here, the mirror symmetry with respect to the SE plane is broken. So because this mirror symmetry is broken, so you can apply the out plane magnetic field in the Z direction. So they have shown that this in plane current allow the generation of the out plane magnetic field or like an outplane effective SOT field. So this SOT field effectively shifts this outplane hysteresis. If you apply positive current, it shifts toward right. If you apply negative field, it shifts towards left. As a result, you can achieve this deterministic switching in the absence of the field. Again, however, the wage structure is also not designed for the practical application because you cannot do the eight inch or 12 inch, right? So he, you cannot have this kind of wedge structure for 12 inch uh, devices. So we are trying to exploring, okay, the 2D materials to generate this unconventional SOTs. 2D materials has intrinsic, like a low symmetry. So here we need a lot of 2D materials. They have different uh, symmetry properties. And we will see that this kind of uh, uh, symmetry properties allow us to predict what kind of SOTs you will have, and uh, if you can have this kind of unconventional out plane, that means like a SOT. So we need the, the space group for typical uh, 2D materials we usually counter, okay? And uh, we need to attention, pay attention here, okay? So for the MRM application, we always like deposit a, a ferromagnet layer on top of it, right? So this ferromagnet layer, such as a cobalt boron is a polycrystalline or amorphous. Okay, it does not have any symmetry locally. Glomoly, okay, it is homogeneous. We can think of it as a very high symmetry. Okay, so this kind of heat structure breaks a lot of symmetry of this 2D material. For example, it breaks the inversion symmetry. 
So this is a heat structure, right? If you're inversing, it's not the same. So it breaks inversion symmetry. It also breaks the mirror symmetry with respect to the XY plane. It also breaks the rotational symmetry with respect to X and Y axis. It breaks all the screw symmetries. It breaks the C, N, and D glide planes. Eventually, okay, we can get a point group for this 2D material and ferromagnetic heterostructure. Okay, we have a lot of point groups. Theoretically, okay, you can calculate, okay, you can calculate this spin, current, uh, spin connectivity tensors based on the point group. Okay, so this is a three by three uh, matrix. Okay, you have three directions, right? X, Y, Z for the spin position. You have three directions for the current vector. You have Gx, Gy, Gz. Okay, normally we only apply current along X and Y, right? We cannot apply current along Z direction. So this chi, okay, this chi spin tensor is a rank two tensor. And this is the table, okay? So if you look carefully at this table, you will find only these two allow you to generate the, the spin position by applying implant current. You see, here is applying current along y direction, you generate z spin position. Here, of course, you don't have any symmetry. You can apply x and y direction, you will generate a z direction from polarization. Based on this one, okay, so we can predict, right? So if it is C1V, it is C1, you will have the unconventional damping like torque. So this unconventional damping like torque is originated, originated from the outer plane spin position. Okay, we can see here topological insulators such as bismuth sandlite, bismuth terrorite, and animal terrorite. After you break the symmetry with the additional ferromagnetic layer, you still have a C3V. And this C3V does not allow uh, unconventional SOT along the outer plane direction. The 2H GMD materials, it's also C3V. You don't have this kind of anti unconventional semi like SOT along the direction. However, for some material like a TD phase GMD materials, such as Thomson Dateroid, it will reduce to C1V. And this structure allows you to generate unconventional SOT along the Z direction. Let's see if the experimental results are consistent with our like, prediction. So I have worked on this model layer 2H phase TMD cobalt boron bilayers. So this is the Raman spectroscopy of the model layer TMD. And we deposit the cobalt boron on top of it. And then we characterize the magnetic properties. Uh, such as the uh, alarm hall effect and the uh, planet hall effect. So we can bear the spin of talk of following the semi uh, sem second ha harmonic hall effect. So we basically use this uh, equation to fit the uh, second hall resistance. And then we can extract the damping like uh, SOT efficiency and the field like torque efficiency. So here is the, is the obtained, okay, the in plane field like SOT effect field. and uh, other plane, that mean like SOT effect field, okay? So, so this is, uh, uh, you can see that, okay? For, for this uh, that mean like a field, okay? You have a zero, okay? It means that to our experimental uncertainty, we cannot observe it. In contrast, uh, this uh, field like talk is uh, quite large, it's very significant. So this is uh, uh, very different from the typical spin hole system. For the tantalum common case, you have very large damping like SOT. You have relatively small uh, field like SOT. We are trying to understand why uh, do we have this kind of uh, SOT from this model layer 2H phase TMD. You can have uh, four kinds of uh, mechanisms, like a rock spot effect, dress, uh, dress horse effect, spin hole effect, and the spin moment locking. We know that uh, this uh, 2H phase is not topological insulator, so this one is eliminated. And we know that it's not consistent with the dress horse uh, symmetry, so it's also eliminated. So what about the rush bar effect and spin hall effect? For the rush bar effect, okay, so it is uh, originated uh, from this picture, okay. Initially, you have, have this kind of helical structure uh, of the Fermi surface, okay. This, uh, if you apply the electric field, okay, this Fermi surface or the Fermi circle will shift, and this shift, you will see that there will be a spin accumulation, okay? The long equilibrium spin accumulation induced by the current 
So this is a, like induced as an interface. So this kind of interface the spin position act as the effective field to generate the field like torque. Of course, this kind of spin chemical like a spin accumulation will also be able to diffuse into the ferromagnetic layer. Okay, it can generate the damping like torque, but theoretically it is very small compared with the damping like SOT. For the SOT picture, it's very different. Okay, so you apply a longitudinal current, you will generate a real transverse electro motive force for different spins so that you will have spin transfer like uh, torque. Okay, this kind of torque is damping like torque. So that's the reason we believe this uh, spin hole effect system will have a larger SO, damping like SOT. So in the end, we believe that uh, our uh, 2H TMD generates SOT because of the strong rush bar Einstein effect. A lot of picture, a lot of uh, naive understanding is that this is a model layer, okay? So the spin hole effect usually happens in the 3D structure, right? So it is not that expected in this model layer structure. So we need to take special care that here we don't observe this outer plane spin polarization, okay? So this outer plane damping like torque is because of the in plane spin polarization. So M cross sigma, okay, give you outer plane damping like uh, effective field, okay? The damping out plane, the torque is still in plane. So people, okay, so people from Cornell University have studied a lot of kind of material like a TD phase Thompson dihedral. This kind of TD phase Thompson dihedral has an even lower symmetry. It only has a one mirror symmetry with respect to this BC plane. So it means that uh, this A axis is the low symmetry axis and the B axis is the high symmetry axis in the plane. So the Professor Daniel Ruff's group at Cornell University have demonstrated that if you apply current along the A axis, you will have this kind of tall B, the unconventional outer plane spin population or the outer plane damping like SOT. If you apply current along the B axis, you don't have this kind of uh, uh, outer plane spin population or outer plane damping like a torque. So this is uh, consistent with the like a symmetry argument. However, how to use the, this uh, outer plane spin population to achieve the perpendicular magnetic switching remains unexplored. So we are working on it. So we have talked about the spin orbital torque generation from the 2D material. People have also studied the uh, 2D maglets. Okay, these are very like a recently emerged field. People have discovered that intrinsic magnetism in these 2D materials, such as chromium triiodide and the chromium germanium terrorite, these are like insulating like uh, maglets and people observe the magnetism using the mock. So we have demonstrated, okay, the current induced uh, SOD switching of a uh, 2D metallic maglet, ion germanium terrorite, FGT for short, okay? So this was uh, done in collaboration with the Professor Jin Shi's group at UC Riverside. So we utilize the spin of torque from the platinum, which is a 3D metal, and we achieve very light switching. So you may wonder, why don't we use the uh, spin of torque from the 2D material? It's just because that the 2D material heat structure is very difficult to achieve. So recently, so my previous group, okay, uh, I was involved in, uh, have demonstrated that we can actually have this kind of tungsten dihedral FGD heat structure. And uh, we observed this kind of exalted spin texture inside this kind of heat structure by using Lorentz transmission electron microscope. We observed this kind of half white and half dark dot. And this is like the neo type of skirmia. This is the signature. So this skirmia can be very small. Okay, now it's still 100 nanometer size. In future, if we can engineer, we can potentially achieve like a, a 10 nanometer or even smaller skirmia. So this skirmia could be potentially very important for high density memory applications. So, so I would like to say that there are many, many works we can do in the three important directions. So we still need to pay a lot more attention to understand the origin of the SOTs. The second direction is about the large scale growth of these 2D materials for MRM applications. So we have to uh, grow these materials in a very large scale 
and we are very good at crystal limit. Okay, and then we deposit the perpendicular megalith on top of it and uh, integrate it uh, into a MRAM device array and demonstrate it. So it's very challenging, and we are working on it. Lastly, we can also work on this kind of uh, purely 2D spintronic system. Okay, we can combine 2D megalith and 2D long megalith together to explore very exotic, like a uh, topological phase properties and uh, like a potentially uh, spintronic devices. Before I end my seminar, I would like to acknowledge many helps from uh, my collaborators and friends. So many of the works were done uh, when I was a, a graduate student and a postdoc at the UCLA. So this work uh, was under supervision of the professor Ken Wen, and I acknowledge many supports from uh, my uh, team members. So especially Professor uh, Dr. Ya Bing Fan and uh, Dr. Guo Changyu. We obtained uh, significant help from uh, uh, theorist uh, Yaroslav Skovniak. Okay, the, he helps a lot with the theory. We also, I also acknowledge the help from Professor Qin Shi's group for the 2D, 2D material. At last, okay, I want to say that these 2D materials are really a good platform to explore efficient SOT switching and uh, unconventional spin charge in the convention phenomena. I hope that uh, you are interested. If you want to know more detail, you can check, check out this uh, reference. So we recently wrote a review paper on it and uh, you, you can find all the details in this uh, archive paper. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Xiao. Uh, very impressive talk, very impressive work. Um, I would like to see if there's uh, any questions from the um, audience. Uh, now I see most of them are muted, uh, but is there any way you would like to raise the question? Uh, so please feel free to do so. Probably, uh, uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Jimin, a uh, very nice talk. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, um, about the uh, skirming in the 2D material, uh, I think it's in the page, page 93, yeah. uh, yeah. so, uh, so it's FGT. So why, why does the skirming can be found in the FGT? Is, is there a DMI in the FGT? So, so thank you for your question. So the question is about uh, if there's a carol interaction inside this uh, FGT to form the skirming. So that's a very important question we have to understand. So FGT itself is a central symmetric, so it does not support the bulk DMI. So here we use a, a heat structure. So we interface this FGT to a heavy metal layer. Okay, so this is a heavy, like a 2D, mega, a 2D uh, like a material, Thomson Okay, this is probably the heaviest 2D material you can find. So this kind of interface can provide you very large DMI. At, at, at least we discovered that you can have very large DMI at this interface. And as a result, we can obtain this skirmion texture. So what's the thickness of the uh, risk FGT? Uh, that, that's yes. a, uh, thank you for your question. What is the thickness of this FGT? So we have uh, utilized uh, various uh, FGT structures, uh, thickness. Like uh, from like a four nanometer to like a uh, fifteen nanometers, we observed in like a uh, uh, sub ten nanometer FGD thin films. So for so very thick what? one, we don't okay. observe it. Yeah. Okay, so so you, that's why you think uh, the DMI came from the interface, not the, the bulk. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For more detail, you can check out this reference. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Well, uh, uh, Qingming, uh, I noticed that the current mm -hmm. density for your spinotic talk devices are actually in a order of 10 to the power 9 mm -hmm. ampere per meter square, mm -hmm. which is um, actually, um, I, I, how do you compare it with the um, spin transfer talk? It seems that it is actually kind of comparable. Uh. That's a good question. Okay. 
So for uh, spin transfer talk, okay, the, the, the switching current density is also like at the 10 to 10, almost not, not like 10 to 10 or 10 to 11. Okay. So it's still larger, okay, that's a still larger than this. And if you want to achieve very fast switching, okay, people actually apply the current density as higher as like 10 to 12. Mm. So, so it's, it's, I would as I say it's still lower, okay. But, but we need to pay attention as it's not a fair comparison, okay. So, so this is like a, like a more like a DC switching. We apply a five minute second pulse. So right. this switching is very slow, okay. Mm. If you do it for STT, I guess the switching density is also like 10 to 10. Okay, so it's, it's still higher, but it's not that higher, okay? Mm -hmm. But if we want to achieve like a very fast switching, like a nanometer second switching, I, for this TI, you still need to apply a large current to do that, okay? Right, okay. and um, actually for this uh, tender uh, power nine, is it the true value? Because uh, you are having the heterostructure with the TI at the bottom, and on the top you have the cobalt ion ferrite, right? yes. which is conducting. Yes. Okay, so that's a very, uh, I thank you for your question. Yeah, that's true, okay, that's true. So actually that's also a very important thing we need to address, okay. So this is a heterostructure we are using for this SOT memory, right? So we have this kind of uh, kind of insulating or like a semi-insulating or semi-conducting TI layer. We have the conducting common ball layer. So a significant amount of current will be shunted, okay, in, into this uh, common ball layer. So they will not contribute to the ST much. So, so we estimate current inside it, okay, it is very low, but if you convert it to the overall density, it's, it's still like 10 to 10. However, the key thing is that, okay, eventually, okay, eventually we can like uh, uh, try to uh, engineer it, okay, to, to, to try to use, for example, a lot of kind of megalite, right? To have high resistance megalite, or we can achieve this kind of slightly more conductive TI material, to achieve a better like a resistance matching. Okay, so in that sense, the current density can be further reduced. Okay, the overall current density can be further reduced to the level of the intrinsic TI level. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the idea. I see. I see. Can we try to replace the, uh, like the molybdenum uh, with another, like, uh, another heavy metal with the operating design of whole angle with the TI? Okay, that's that's a a good question. So, have we tried to replace this molybdenum by a larger heavy metal la layer with opposite opposite uh uh or angle spin or angle? So yeah. actually, okay, here molybdenum does not contribute to the SOT much, right? In mm -hmm. reality, the spin hole angle of a molybdenum is like zero point zero zero four. Okay, still has some. Okay, it is opposite to the TI. Okay, people have shown that if you only have a molybdenum, like sufficiently thick, like a six nanometer, you can achieve switching with a very high current density. People have done that. But for our case, okay, we achieve, achieve the uh, SOT sign that is consistent with TI and the current density is much lower. Okay, so we don't want to use the high metal layer in, in the spacer because that will degrade, okay, that will degrade the current density a lot. I think it, it has been done in other papers. For example, in Professor Wang Jinping's group, okay, they utilize this one, okay, the bismuth cell line for moron, okay. So actually in between, okay, to the, for the PMA structure, they have the tantalum layer. So tantalum has the opposite spin hole angle with respect to the bismuth cell line. Okay, they can also achieve SOT switching and the SOT sign is consistent with the bismuth cell line. But they achieve the SOT Magnitude is less, okay, smaller compared with their case when there is no tantalum. So it means that tantalum reduced uh, SOT. Just in your picture, um, the bismuth selenide is it polycrystalline or <laughs> it's polycrystalline? Okay, that's a mean. That's like a spotter topological yeah. insulator. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems that um, um, the crystallinity doesn't seem to matter much on the uh, topological properties. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, that's their hypothesis, okay. Right. So it, it uh, still like uh, remains to be explored. Right. Okay, so. 
Is there any other questions from the audience? I actually see a question in the group chat. Okay, so right. yeah, one, sure. so Dimitri actually asked a question about this. Okay, uh -huh. so yeah. why do we have alpha? Okay, when the spin position is collinear with the magnetization, why we don't have this kind of alpha? No. If the spin position is perpendicular to the magnetization, okay, so to have like a concrete uh, like a derivative uh, to to understand a fully you have to do a concrete uh, derivation right so if you divide it you will get the result and you will get this one okay so the simple idea is that so if you have a collinear spin position and magnetization you will see that in the log equation so m cross m cross sigma is uh, the same okay as uh, m cross m cross phi h okay h is the effective field so this the alpha and the sigma actually are collinear. They can you can add and subtract them together. Okay, so it's, it means that this sigma acts as the effective damping. Okay, so it uh, helps. Okay, it uh, will evolve alpha here. However, for this uh, implant simulation, it's very different. Okay, so this is a state is the implant simulation stays implant. Okay, it's always like a. Uh, uh, perpendicular okay during the switching if you switch from up to down so actually if we switch uh, uh, across this implant layer it will actually drag you back okay it's like effective field right it's not help you after you pass through this implant layer okay so it does not help you okay this is not like a direct compensation to the alpha so you don't expect uh, alpha here I hope that my 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 answer addressed your question. Okay, if you want to understand more details, you can check out uh, actually a 2000 paper by Jonathan Sun. Okay, he has a very nice paper about the single model STD switching. You will you will see that uh, with the collinear simulation, you have alpha. Without, you don't have alpha. Right. Uh, any so um, may I like to know, uh, is there any other questions from the audience? I'm, I'm sorry, can I, can I continue asking another question? Sure, yeah. sure. So, yeah, so here is like the, uh, in the, in the right, on the right. Uh, so it's like a, you, you are using a damping electrode switch at the moment, but you don't have damping term over here, right? We, we have the damping term over here. Uh, so, so right. actually, it's, it's a combination of the, uh, all, all we can, it's a combination of the damping like a talk and the feel like a talk. Okay. So we, we actually, okay. So actually, like I said, we actually ignore the feel like a talk. We only consider damping like a talk for the simplicity. Okay. Okay. I'll go, go, go to the, to the detail from that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, so, is there any other um, audience uh, who would like to uh, raise some questions? Uh, if not, then uh, we are very glad uh, once again to have uh, Dr. Xiao Xingping to uh, present the work idea. And yeah, and thanks very much for your um, attendance to this seminar. So we will uh, conclude this seminar here. Thanks very much once again to uh, Qingming. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you.